Hey everyone, this is Abaddon from 524 here. I thought you could all benefit from knowledge on how free healing works and the concept of tile hitting for points during KVK. I know a lot of people are trying to go for those rewards but don't necessarily want to put their troops in a tower or lose troops or if there's a nap all around and nobody's really fighting. So this is a fun way you guys can earn the points, not lose any troops, and actually heal them for free. So stick around. If you already know how this, this works, um, I cover a few other things too. So you still might learn something new, so stick around. One thing I'd like to say before we begin, I'm still gonna be posting KVK and Darklands, Raid, New World, videos like that, but I will also be making guides. I'll be posting in-depth guides like this one and kind of like the past few that you've seen on my channel. And these guides take a lot of time to make. The past few guides I made, Darklands, Kingdom Raid, the King's Handbook that I just posted, took around five hours each to make, um, some a little more, they take a lot of time. And the guides have some really good useful info and some knowledge for especially newer players. So it's my goal to slowly start creating these guides for every event, every aspect of Guns of Glory. So if you can like and share with your friends, it's a huge help. Thank you. So without any further delay, let's get started. You may have seen my previous video on intermediate and advanced KVK strategy, and I kind of cover free healing in that video, um, but I don't really go into depth on the troops lost and how many you need for each tier. Be sure to check the chart on the screen in front of you. And this chart is very important because you will earn a lot more points for killing a troop than you do for losing one. And since this video shows me losing tier 12 troops, I'll just use tier 12s as my example for my calculations. But from this chart, you can use any tier going all the way down and calculate what you need to lose or kill of each tier in order to reach your target points. So for this, I'm only going to calculate for the 66 million point rewards because that's where you earn all of your marquee badges um, but it's really easy to calculate how many kills you'd need to go higher tier rewards on your own so let's just say you only want the 66 million point rewards you would need to kill a total of 146,667 tier 12 troops and that's because killing a single tier 12 troop is worth 450 points 66 million divided by 450 is 146,000, right? So if you're tile hitting and trading and you're only losing troops, you're going to only get 150 points per dead tier 12. So you would need to lose 440,000 of the same tier 12s to earn the same rewards. But let's say you have a friend in the enemy kingdom that you're fighting or you message somebody and you guys make a deal. Um, a really good way to do it is that you each trade off and you each lose some troops to each other. And that way you get, it kind of equals out on troops lost versus troops killed. So if you each lose and kill 110,000, you'll both hit the 66 million reward points versus needing to lose 440,000 to get those same points. And as you can see from my video, losing 200,000 tier 12 cavalry takes about 337 hours of healing speed ups to rebuild them instantly and to heal them instantly. And that's just assuming that you don't want to let them heal on their own slowly. And this is really only advised if you plan to continue taking losses. Otherwise, there's really no point in you speeding it up. It's better just to save those speed ups. If you want to reach the higher tier of points, all calculations here, these are based on if you and your friend both lose an equal amount of tier 12s and you switch off. So you're not just killing or losing only, it's kind of the, the shared option where you and your friend are each losing the same amount. To reach a billion, you, this, this, these losses get pretty high, you would need to lose 1.666 million, almost 1.7 million tier 12s, that's a lot. And it, to me, it's really not, if you're going to be doing tile hits, it's really not advised going this high. The rewards for the losses really don't justify the losses in my opinion, but I mean, if you have the speed ups and you don't care, go for it, right? And just to highlight the estimated speed up cost for this, so to reach the 500 million point mark, um, with you and your friend both losing the same amount of tier 12s, it will take roughly 1400 hours of healing speed ups to recover the loss and to empty your hospitals. And if, if you're sitting on a lot of troop speed ups, I think you can see in this video, I, st I started with around 12,000 um, hours of speed ups. If you, ha if you have a lot, I mean, go for it. You can use them up. It's a good way to s just trade these speed ups for rewards. It's also important to note that if you're going higher for these higher target points to keep an eye on your max hospital capacity and to heal as needed 
because if your hospitals are full and your troops start going to the sanctuary, not all troops go there and some of them are lost permanently. So if you keep enough hospital space, you will be able to heal everything and take no permanent losses. You could use the healing talent Instant Heal. Um, it will automatically heal 10% of troops in the hospital. Um, you can use this every 24 hours or just utilize the free healing and heal everything right away and just either wait and let it all heal slowly over time or use speed ups. Um, one, one drawback of doing the 10% heal daily is that if you, if you do that, basically you don't benefit from the free healing because anything left over in the hospitals that you heal, you'll still need to use resources for because you won't have the 100% healing reduction. And just to highlight in this video and in the screenshots, you can see each hit from my friend Dalton and the reward tiers that he reached after each attack. And thank you, D, for letting me record some tile hits and use some of my calculations. You are the man. And moving on to the second part of this guide is the free healing and how to obtain it. So for free healing, you basically need to reach 100% healing cost reduction. And the best way to do this is if you have a king, right before KVK begins, ask the king to activate the healing buff Guided Recovery. Um, this reduces healing cost. This should be done by every kingdom that kept their crown and still has a king because the timer for all the king skills, it resets when KVK begins, but if it was activated, the effect lasts throughout KVK and while KVK is going. Next up, if the doctor's concern is triggered when you lose some troops, you get an even bigger reduction in the healing cost. And this will trigger if you lose troops, whether they're in the tower, throne, or if you're on a tile like in this video. Also worth mentioning is that the Alliance Healing Timer skill, you can use that. It's just a reduction in the time to heal. So if you guys are planning on taking a lot of losses, or if you already have taken a lot of losses and you're still fighting, good thing to do is activate that and you can actually save a lot of the healing speedups. And if you're wondering, free healing is made possible because unlike the Troop Training Timer Reducer, the healing buff stacks differently and you can actually stack to 100% and heal for free. So as seen in the screenshot above and in the video while I'm in my estate going to heal. So if you add up the reductions, just the training boots are 25% healing cost reduction. Your talent population surge is a 25% cost reduction. Guided recovery king talent, 30% reduction. And then the doctor's concern, 20% reduction. That makes it 100%. And so you're already going to be spending a lot of resources to retrain lost troops, assuming that there's a lot of fighting during KVK. So any resources saved for healing is really helpful. Whichever gear set you use to heal, whether it's the Lieutenant 2 set or the training set, only one piece of each of those gear sets actually gives you a healing cost reduction. But a few of the, the pieces in the set either boost your hospital capacity or healing speed and will make you require less speed up. So it's a good idea if you're going to be healing, just wear the full set. And I also keep my healing gear and my war gear on a different quick equipment set so that I don't have to spend time during KVK manually switching individual pieces of gear. Up on the screen I have the two sets that I wear and it is good to note uh, the training gear set is slightly better so if you have it just wear the full set of training gear. I think the the benefit on the healing cost reduction is only about four percent but every little bit adds up. Also some people might not realize that you need to make sure you have the life preserver and population surge on the same talent tree. Um, during KVK, if you're fighting and you switch your Lord talents while a talent is active, that talent actually goes directly onto cooldown, even if the timer hasn't finished. So if you pop population surge and you guys are doing free healing and you switch your Lord talent tree to the other tree, you're gonna immediately put that on cooldown. And instead of being able to have the 30 minutes of free healing that that gives you, it's gonna be lost and it's gonna be on cooldown. So also for this guide, the amount of healing speedups needed will vary slightly based on the hospital level, your research, gear, things like that. But from this guide, you should have a fairly decent idea of how to calculate on your own what's needed to get each reward level. Um, if you think I missed anything or if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I will be responding to any questions people ask. And now that you guys have watched this video, you can all try out free healing if you've never used it before. And you can tile hit for some points this next KVK. I will be uploading recent Darklands videos from this week. Um, I'll do my new world where I tried to get top 10. So don't forget to hit subscribe if you want to see those. And also for guides, if anyone thinks they could benefit from a video guide, 
please post what you want to see below. I already have a few ideas for my next few videos, but I will definitely consider any suggestions as well. Thank you all, and I will see you next time.